Hello and welcome to Schools Rock. We review. Uh, I'm once again joined with Sudarshan Amutantri, former Sri Lanka captain. Of course, there's no Schools Rugby. It was on hold for a week. But the good news is that referees have decided to cut their two weeks uh, into a week. So this weekend, week four action of uh, Dialogue Schools Rugby League will begin. And uh, Muthu, uh, it's a good gesture by the referees to cut that short. I think it was great that uh, the parties involved got together, had certain discussions on measures that they would take to uh, start the rugby again. So I think it's good for the spectators, the schoolboys, coaches and all parties involved to get the school rugby restarted again this weekend. Absolutely, indeed. Uh, we'll talk about a few matters in terms of uh, Science College incident, what happened and the latest of it. Uh, and uh, also we'll look at some internationals and some referees decisions in terms of uh, what the technology uh, even with the technology, how did the referees uh, uh, made their decisions? So we'll take a quick break and we'll be back. Right, welcome back. As you said, uh, so the games will uh, go ahead. Uh, it is not the original week four fixtures. However, it's going to be week five fixtures will be carried forward. And the original week four fixture will be played at the end of week seven, at the end of the first round. Yeah, so which means there will be an extension of one week on the overall competition. But it's overall, it's good news to hear that it's going to restart and it's going to happen. So looking forward to some exciting school rugby coming up this weekend. So going back to that all aho ho ha, whatever it is, Muto, about the science college. Api that kamutu, uh, if you watch the internationals, uh, especially Ireland versus uh, South Africa game, Muto, even with the technology, right? Ireland fans are not happy. Even coach Andy Farrell said, uh, "That's life. We have to move on." Uh, after uh, some dubious decision by the referees. So, make a tamai game, even with the technology, for example, James Lowe's that pass, Chelsea, Colby went for that try. Correct. So, technology is not a game. So, uh, first, what do you think? I think the game of rugby, the beauty of it is that it's surrounded by human error and it's the human element of it. If you try to automate and uh, take technology to the extent of taking the human element out of it, I think we are going to actually ruin the game for to a certain extent. But even with technology, there's a certain uh, limitation there where actual people have to make decisions. So they are in that case where we saw the disallowed try for Ireland, there was there was no clear subsequently evidence on the evidence part to award that try. So that was the reason that it was not allowed. So, but everyone has moved on from it. There was no discussion afterwards. Everyone has accepted the final decision and uh, they are looking forward for next weekend. Right. So again, Mutu, this is about evidence versus assumption. Referee, even with that technology, as you can see on the screens, very difficult to uh, come for a decision. Maybe Irish fans will argue this. It's a clear try. So as Andy Farrell and on the other hand, South African says uh, it is not a try. We can see the ball is not dotted on the ground. There's even a millicentimeter is enough as evidence until you are satisfied with your decision with the given uh, evidence with all those camera angles, Mutu. So, uh, going back to that science college incident. Now, Mutu being a Thomian, uh, being a Thomian, Mutu says it was a try. So, I say it's not a try. We had our own argument. You may agree, you may disagree. It's completely fine. But at that point, it is a referee's decision because he's more closer than. We saw the replay how many times, Mutu? Maybe, maybe 15, 20 times. Try, nah, 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 try, nah. try, try, nah, nah, nah. so Muthu, uh, it is gone. We condemn the other assault, completely condemn that. But coming back to this, the game has to move on. Correct. So, why I said suggested that was a try was it uh, because we saw the action of the player falling on the line, but 
there was no clear evidence because he hit his elbow first. But then again, I come from a player point of view where I would say I would manage to ground it and there was not a big margin. But then again, the argument can come where you say that two seconds is enough for a player to come and scoop the ball and uh, hold it up. So that's a 50-50 call at the end of the day. But I was uh, mostly disappointed for Science College but because that would have been a great comeback even though it would have been against my school. But at the end, uh, rugby, I think, it was the correct decision at the end because there was no clear evidence to award the try. So that's what uh, made that call. So, uh, well done. Uh, एक तो माय वुने साइंस मैच चेकिंग एंड एक तो माय इंटरनेशनल मैच चेकिंग उच्चर कैमरा स्टील है सो मे बी द आधा आर्गुमेंट अमंग द रग्बी फ्रेटरनिटी वी शुड हैव ऑल अगेंस्ट टीएमओ राइट टीएमओ इज वेरी कॉस्टली ऑफ कोर्स एक एक गेम में करके लग टीएमओ दान ने दान ना हम गेम में करके टीएमओ दान � Rather, I would rather bring a foreign uh, referee and a foreign CMO. So they should spend our our, our uh, next uh, seven eight weeks uh, with us, Mutu, because we know the commercial aspect of this game. Yeah. We know we have to uh, improve the standard of the referee. I think eva ke kine kine kora apne referee rat poti unanda ke na proper. I mean, recognize but uh, ref ke ne koi CMO ke ne kine ho thi. Egalonge CPD ka professional development ka uplift kora. So even I think that is that is the thing. So yeah, I think the technology part of it is I think the icing on the cake. Actually, we should get the cake right first before we apply the icing. So I think getting down international referees to work with our local referees here to educate coaches how to communicate to referees and how to create that fact transparency factor on how you interpret the rules is the first step that we have to take. Because we those still have sorry, Musto. We still have that cancel culture that referee. Or the team make a parad do no thing. Or referee do no. Or the team make a do no thing. Referee mistake karat. Yeah, you know you will take the win. Yeah, so there, there were instances where like I captain so many sides and maybe we came out on the wrong end of some calls but at the end of the day it's a matter of respect and how you try to go forward and rectify those errors as players, coaches, referees because we are not perfect as I mentioned even last week. There are times where I miss tackles where I knock the ball on at crucial situations but it doesn't mean that I'm a bad player. Same goes to the referees as well. They make may might make wrong calls but If there's a genuine reason to support that, maybe they are also not perfect at the moment. So we can always try to improve our processes and get together as a fraternity and like to try to uplift uh, each other to make the game more interesting to everyone. Absolutely. And uh, Mama, why do you want to TMO ekate ana investment take a foreign referee? The reason is we witnessed that uh, Ireland match ke TMO ke some of the decisions are uh, arguable, right? So. Uh, मेतंदी वेला टीएमओ प्रश्न आप करते हैं क्योंकि आपसे उपको में अन्य टीएमओ हरी ना यार टीएमओ डिशन हरी ना ये तो टीएमओ क्रिटिसाइज करें। I'm just saying, so we have to, like you said, we have to build the cake first. Our fans' perspective, our rugby fraternity perspective, first we should uh, learn the fundamentals to respect the referee and the decision. I'm not saying, I'm not defending their inaccuracy in terms of uh, some of the games no we are not defending that that's up to their review process and their committee to uh, pr- uh, produce better referees but to make it am i completely care so uh, this is only our personal view uh, i'm sure you will agree with that i agree with that i think agree i agree to that in this extent in the sense i harp back to the fact that this is a game surrounded by a lot of human elements and uncontrollable factors we can't be perfect the law book is there but it's different to how we interpret it some might interpret it different so that is the area of clarification we need to iron out between coaches players and referees so continuous engagement co- seminars conferences getting down international referees to uh, have uh, open uh, forums to ask questions and get answers so those are the things that we should be currently working on to iron out these issues because world rugby will always change their laws so we need to adapt to that and we need to understand what they mean by that and how they interpret it that will clear all confusion in this regards you mentioned world rugby has law but uh, they keep changing the law they wanted the game to be flow but look at this clip i'm a bit confused mutu this is at the restart and uh, right on the 22 calls mark and uh, how many seconds uh, we lost on this uh, this is a uh, according to new world rugby law this is uh, possible yeah so that was an interesting aspect in the under 20 game where i first time i experienced off a restart they 
called a mark. So this, I, I feel that World Rugby is also trying to discourage players to kick into the 22 because they want that contest in there because that uh, close proximity from the 50 meter to the 22, that's the area where contested kicks are go in the restart. So I think they are encouraging more of that to make it a contest. So I think they're discouraging kicks into the opponent's 22. That's what I feel that they're doing through that. But when you say, Mark, there are so many options, you can opt a scrum on the mark. Call. I don't think you can opt for a scrum anymore. After oh, the really? Springboks game, I, we have to clarify that because right. after the final that uh, happened where yes, they called for the yes, scrum, I think yes. they took that off uh, off the free kick to enhance the game speed. We need to clarify that. Interesting. And uh, also, anyway, Mutu, uh, from this incident uh, that uh, we witnessed, again, the kick goes into touch straight away. So, what's, exactly. the, point? So what's the point of this? I think that it's just a confusing uh, rule there. I, I don't understand why they have to implement that mark rule at that point because it doesn't make sense for the overall picture when they're trying to fast make the game faster. I don't understand it uh, contradicts their overall objective to make the game more entertaining and free-flowing. There we go. Uh, so we'll take a break and we'll take a look at the international and how they played uh, in the last weekend uh, summer internationals. For another helping, darling? Yes, my love. <laughs> Garçon! Red Bull gives you wings. Right, in terms of the uh, top tier summer internationals, the first game was uh, England versus uh, All Blacks. Uh, we have an England fan and an All Black fan. <laughs> uh, there's so many uh, differences between our thoughts, uh, but go ahead, uh, you guys survived. Uh, I think that would be the correct uh, statement there because I think it's a new era. Razor has taken over at the moment and I think he's implementing a new uh, style of play. I think he has taken some bits and pieces out of the Blues uh, performance in the Super Rugby and he's trying to implement a certain way that they want to play against the top European internationals as well. I think they have not perfected it yet, but I think they have a good positive signs on how they wanted to dominate contact and how they selected the team also with heavy forwards, somewhat similar to the South African teams. But it was interesting to see how they moved the ball and played off the pods uh, in this game. Yeah, uh, of course, rugby is played for 80 minutes. Uh, until 80 minutes, uh, you're not the winner will, won't be decided. However, it looked like until the 65th minute uh, where DMAC uh, came and put that little final penalty, it looked like pretty much England's game. I think it's it's a matter of playing to your strengths and weaknesses. I think All Blacks are trying to be a bit innovative in their playing style currently. I think they are they have always been innovators in the playing style. That's how they have always won the World Cups. But currently, they are still struggling to find their identity on how they want to play because they have a lot of mixture of players who can do a lot of versatile uh, have a lot of versatility, vers versatility with them. So I think that is a key factor in how they we decide how they want to play in these games. Absolutely. In case uh, if uh, the scores the, in favour of England the other day, we can see the uh, newspaper headlines. Welcome to uh, All Blacks coaching uh, Robertson. Yeah, that, that would have been because he is always going to be under pressure because he is now deemed as the New Zealand rugby saviour. So they are expecting wins from him right from the get-go. So, I think they came away. I think they were pretty lucky also to get that penalty in the latter part of the game. But I think England has come a long way and I think this uh, match at Eden Park will be a really interesting one because no one has beaten All Blacks for the last 28 to 30 years. It's a fortress, All yeah. Blacks fortress. But yeah. I, there's a good chance of England coming out on top this weekend. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting, Mutu. Uh, but uh, what is happening with the All Blacks? Uh, after all, they look just like a normal international team for other teams' perspective? I think it's back to like harping back on what they meant on the speed of the game because All Blacks wants to play at speed. But they, when they encounter these European sides coming from the Northern Hemisphere, they always encounter a slow game which they can't handle the physicality of it 
for now but they are trying to implement and they dominate the contact area to make the game faster but they are always there's a statement of from uh, Razer as well after the game saying the speed of the game is not there yet for them they want to play at a high pace high pace game for them to execute skills kick run pass that's their thing even the heavy forwards do their uh, passes out the back but those things are hard to execute if you are not winning the contact situation that for that i think they are still struggling to dominate that area but i think they are getting there but it will be really interesting to see how they uh, overcome it, that challenge this week Hmm. And uh, talking about England performance, yes, uh, it was uh, Owen Farrell who dominated the number 10 shirt and then the next choice would be uh, Ford. Uh, again, he's out with injury and the young Marcus Smith, uh, we know how creative player he's playing for Harley Quinns. And uh, yes, he did miss key eight points. Perhaps that would be the uh, uh, losing cause. But, uh, you know, this is a testament, uh, but England still uh, played that different game plan, uh, the attacking rugby we would like to see. Yeah, I think this is the start of the World Cup cycle in another three to four years, right? So these will be the testing times where they will try different, different things with a different combination of players. I think Marcus Smith has a good opportunity here to seal the number 10 jersey if he these things, but then he will be quite similar to uh, DMAC, who is on the opposite end. But when you take the Super Rugby competition, they fell short. But that's the thing. So there's a balance between running and fast-paced rugby versus always winning rugby. You know the last World Cup, Springboks played a quite a slow game, but they managed to win. So it's a chicken and egg situation where either you want to play fast or you, you want to go into like a very physical game where you have to dominate the contact situation. So those decisions will have to be taken within these uh, few tests and coming up to the World Cup in another three to four years where they will build an overall structure and a game plan moving into the World Cup. There we go. Uh, let's uh, hear from a former England uh, 7s and 15s player, Tom Wandel, uh, his thoughts uh, on this game. Welcome back. So the other international game, uh, the Wallabies versus Wales, 25 points to 16 win under their new coach, uh, a Kiwi coach, Joe Smith. Yeah, it was really interesting to see the outcome of that game because the last time they met at the World Cup, it was 35-6 in favour of Wales. So the players that they have brought into this game with the new coaching regime, I think it's very interesting to see the rugby championship coming up because all Southern Hemisphere teams are dominating at the moment. Absolutely, yes, they certainly did dominate uh, the week uh, one of uh, the uh, summer uh, internationals, Mutu. But uh, this looks like a different Wallaby set of a, a great transformation. We saw some great running rugby, perhaps uh, a little bit. Uh, we need to see a uh, uh, less kick. Uh, I spoke to uh, David Campisi, the Campo, the legend. He said, uh, Mate, uh, it's a very great performance, but uh, I don't want to see uh, number 10 Lolisio kicking that much. Exactly. I think they will have the ball in hand more moving forward. I think because of the contact point, like I mentioned, with the, in terms of facing uh, Northern Hemisphere sides, they want to control the territory and position at the same time. But because the running rugby factor comes in if you're dominating territory, because you have to run on the right parts of the field. So you can't be running in your own 22. I think that was why they kick more often. But overall, I think you can, you will expect some sort of a similar style where the Blues and the All Blacks played in the last World Cup, where they will have more ball in hand and continue faces. I think that's something interesting that we can look forward to. I'm sure that's a part of a Coach Smith's strategy. But uh, perhaps on the other hand, Mutu, I also feel like he has given the license to Noah Lolisio, the number 10. You do whatever you feel like. Perhaps they have a game plan, but I saw some quite uh, Surprising kicks, he's kicking to the corners, he's kicking to the gaps and some grubbers and the puns. 
So uh, that is uh, not the typical uh, Wallabies uh, tense performance. Even the great Larkham, he didn't kick as that much. But I know the rugby has transformed from Larkham's era to now. But uh, he has given the license of authority. I think that, that had a lot to do with the Wales uh, coming up on the line and putting pressure on them early. So I think they wanted to get the defence for Wales on the back foot a bit. So they tested them with a little bit of kicks here and there into space to slow down the line speed. I think that was their main concern in, I think, putting a lot of kicks in behind to hold the defence and to check them a bit so that they can execute the backdoor passes and attack on the channels out wide. So that's why I think that was executed in that sense. In terms of uh, this game, uh, one of the key analyses uh, we picked out uh, tackling without arms. There's no arms tackle on the other end. As you can see on the screen, Motu, uh, how many times have you done this, Motu? Because uh, you're not uh, that uh, big, tall uh, uh, number seven uh, that you wore, but uh, this is even happening in internationals. Correct. I think uh, my tackle technique was perfect. I never did anything wrong. <laughs> So, but it was uh, interesting to see at that level this was happening as well because I think the attack player went down and the height was say, uh, lowered as well. So, I think the defender just went in with the no arms just to get uh, to stop the momentum of the attacking player there. So, all the schoolboys out here, make sure you don't do this mistake. Uh, your arms has to come. Uh... It has to wrap perfectly and then take the uh, attacking player down safely as well. Yeah, yeah. that occasion if you go like that you're in the trouble ultimately Mutu. correct because this can clearly come and impact your head or your shoulder because you will, you won't have control of the entire situation because you're just launching into the tackle with just one shoulder and uh, moving on to this game we also have a quickie play of the game look at this uh, sensational uh, one of the wallabies tries uh, as you can see lineup goes early to tom right right Cuts cross field, right dummies, and goes straight through. I think he'll be quick enough to go all the way. Oh, Tom Wright! Yeah! Oh, have you ever seen anything like that from Tom Wright? Wonderful try indeed. So that was a close game at one point. Uh, there was some scare uh, for Wallabies because 18-18 at one point, uh, uh, but uh, certainly Wallabies uh, got the better. I think the attacking uh, license that you mentioned earlier, where Joe Smith gave their players to run out uh, all out on the uh, with the ball in hand, that played a huge role in terms of that try happening as well. So uh, that's a quick uh, check on uh, Wallabies versus Wales. For another helping, darling. Yes, my love. <laughs> Garçon. Red Bull gives you wings. Welcome back. So the other international in the top tier uh, of the world, uh, South Africa defending champions versus Ireland. Uh, at one point, Ireland were the world number one, but South Africa said, no, we are the world number one after winning that. Uh, uh, but for a moment, Mutu, I thought it's going to be a tight game, just like the, one of the World Cup games, but it was not. South Africa came back with a complete different strategy. I think what we will experience in most games coming in the first half of this year is people will try to uh, find different ways to play and set new ways to uh, get, implement their game plan because it was really interesting because I don't think Irish expected the free-flowing uh, fast hands from South Africa to attack the wider channels. They would have expected them to run directly at them and uh, dominate the contact situation. But here we saw even the likes of uh, Peter Steph Detroit. We usually don't see him out outside the wider channels handling the ball and trying to do offloads and stuff like that. That's, this is a new attack picture that South Africa has created and defences will struggle to adjust to this because they are good in their contact situation in the close quarters and if they master the channels out wide where they want to shift the ball quickly and attack out wide, 
South Africa is going to be really hard to stop this World Cup. Absolutely, indeed. Uh, it's a complete different start in terms of, uh, like you mentioned, Peter Steph Dutoy. And he's carrying the ball like, you know, a piece of coconut. Like a Fijian. Fijian. Almost. Absolutely, Muto. So, uh, and uh, again, it's complete free flow rugby. And if you mention and you want to make uh, that audience's first try as a quickie try of game, but uh, that was some fantastic work. That was really interesting. Even in the first few minutes of the game, they decided to just keep shift the ball out wide because Irish were expecting them to come through the middle and uh, attack their. Uh, forwards, but here they went out wide in the first quarters. But, uh, they used the full width of the uh, field, and they ended up scoring a easy try with uh, Kurt Leardens uh, just walking to the try line. Then came the Irish attack, and then some uh, penalties after penalties. Pollard uh, slotting few uh, penalties. He's still playing, mind you. Yes, I think he's a very key factor in that South Africa team because he knows how to control their forwards, and as well as he knows when to go out wide. So he, Rassi has full trust in. Uh, Andre Pollard. Yeah, two times the World Cup winning is not something uh, normal. We often see that. So, also, Sia Kalisi, uh, there's so much controversy when he went to the French team racing uh, 92 and uh, he didn't perform as expectation as an iconic player. And there's so much controversy, but in the green shirt, once again, that day they wore the white shirt, but it's yeah. a different performance. I think that is a very interesting thing because if you take all the South Africans going into the European Rugby, Champion, uh, Rugby Championship, the URC, they don't perform as well as you expect them to uh, them to perform in their own national jersey. This is because they have a very set role in the Springbok jersey, so they know exactly what they do. But when you take them out of that structure and put them into these clubs, I think. Sometimes you give them a free hand, but I don't think they're used to the free-flowing nature of the rugby in those clubs. I think there's a little bit of period of time to adjust. But Chiakilixi came back and as you can see, he dominated uh, in the number 6 jersey for Springboks. Uh, that's a quite interesting strategy where South Africa allows all the foreign-based players to come and play. Whereas uh, Joe Schmidt, for the Wallabies, like uh, players like Skelton, players like Corvetti, who's playing in Japan, he didn't opt for the overseas-based players. So, he's trying to build the base within Australia. I think there's a, there's two sides to this. I think the commercial aspect where they get paid huge amounts of money overseas. I think the unions also have to be able to match somewhat of that funding that comes into in, to these players through those opportunities. So, there's a two-way progress in even Richie Moanga, who is now currently playing in Japan. They are trying to get him back to the All Blacks setup. He was there the other day, watching the game. Yeah. So, I think that's a very uh, interesting situation we will have to see moving forward because players, they will have to open up their borders to players coming and playing for the national team if they want to perform as well because Springboks have done it and they are succeeding quite rightly in that area. Yeah, there you go. Uh, things are not the same with England for the fact because Jack Willis, he played so well uh, in that championship uh, game uh, for two loops. So, uh, that's a consideration in terms of uh, British rugby media. Anyway, coming back to this game, this is a heck of a, heck of a game, uh, Mutu. Until the 80th minute, uh, the Irish didn't let the box settle. Yeah, so because the Irish came out with a clear plan. They had to get revenge on the spring box after the World Cup uh, performance that they had because they were the favourites to win the World Cup. But spring box came, lost to them in the first game, but then ended up going on to win the final. And uh, so, that was a clear picture they wanted to come and play, but they got a completely different Springbok team where they didn't expect that sort of uh, attack structure from them. So, it's really unfortunate for them, but sad for them as well because they wanted to come, and come out this year and just give a good punch in the mouth to, to the Springboks and get that win, but they couldn't at this point. Great, uh, let's wait and see how these international will uh, uh, compete uh, this weekend and we'll talk a bit more uh, on the next show uh, and we'll go for a break and we'll come back with a school's preview.
Welcome back. Uh, before we move into the school's uh, preview, Muto, uh, the Olympic Sevens pool has been uh, out. So, uh, we are a few weeks uh, short uh, for the Olympics uh, that is in Paris, uh, in France. And uh, in pool group A, Muto, uh, New Zealand, Ireland, South Africa, Japan. That's going to be interesting. Ireland are one of the uh, dark horses coming into this uh, uh, Seven Series. And in group B, uh, as you can see on your screens, uh, Argentina, Australia, Samoa and Kenya and Group C, Fiji, France, USA and Uruguay. So again, another South American uh, team coming in. It's going to be a good competition, especially France on Fiji and Antoine Dupont, the, their iconic uh, sensation uh, player of the year. Well, Rabbi, in the 15th, playing in the 7th, it's going to be a great uh, time for the French lovers. I think he's getting a lot of eyes into the Olympics because of his presence in the French team. He came up short in the 15th World Cup, but I think everyone is rooting for him to get a gold medal at this year's Olympics for him to uh, uh, cover up for the loss in the World Cup. So, I think here it's an interesting group because they're going up against uh, Fiji in that group. So, uh, France is a team to look out for because they are the home nation and they will have high expectation to win this year. Absolutely. When you host, uh, obviously the home pressure is there in terms of the medal count. But uh, having said that, Fiji went under a few criticism, not finishing in the World Series well. They changed Ben Golings uh, as the coaching uh, and they put uh, Osia Kolinisov, the former uh, Olympic gold medalist in Rio. Uh, he's currently on coaching duty. So, so many things going on. Yeah. But uh, can Fiji go for the third successive gold, successive gold medal? We have to wait and see. What are your thoughts? I think they, they are quite capable because Sevens Rugby is Fiji Rugby. So, they, are, they can adjust and uh, flick on a quick uh, switch and they will be uh, world number one in no given time. So, they are dark horses and underdogs and no one is expecting them. But I, do, I don't think anyone underestimates Fiji when they are playing them in Sevens. Absolutely. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. Of course, All Blacks will put their hand, hand on made we to have the <laughs> opportunities. And so as Ireland, uh, their performance uh, has been really well uh, in, in the recent past. So uh, in terms of the women's fixtures, let's have a look at the pool here. Two Asian teams, uh, China and Japan. China women, of course, in the Group A and Japan in the Group C. As you can see, China is drawn alongside Canada, Fiji and New Zealand. Yeah, so it's interesting to see China coming up the ranks and finally representing their country in the Olympics in that uh, sense. Japan is the other Asian side that is representing for Asia. So it's really interesting to see the performance of these two sides because China, I know, had a long plan in terms of development and they got some Kiwi coaches on board. I think uh, we'll have someone on the show later on to discuss that. Yeah, let's hear from uh, Rocky Khan, uh, who was a former All Black Sevens uh, player. Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me on board. Uh, yeah, this year has been an amazing experience for the China Women's Sevens team. Uh, from winning the Sevens Challenger Series, uh, winning the three tournaments in Dubai, Montevideo and Krakow. Uh, the girls lost one, to one game in that whole series and it was the first game versus Kenya and Dubai. Uh, we then went on to the Madrid Playoff Tournament. Uh, we played three pool games and then had a crossover game with the other pool, which was the big game uh, to gain qualification into the uh, Sevens World Series for next year and our girls did very well and won that game to gain promotion into next year's World Series uh, and then the big one for us was uh, in Monaco was the Olympic Repertage Tournament which the girls went through undefeated and gained uh, qualification to the Olympics later this month and um, after winning that tournament we had a, a week off and then now we've got uh, in the process of our uh, three weeks training to prepare for the Olympics uh, it's not much time uh, but knowing these girls, uh, they'll give it their best shot. Um, we've got a bit of experience in the team. A few girls have played the last years, oh, sorry, the last um, the last Olympics in Tokyo. Uh, so I know these girls will will train the house down, focus on the basics, try and do the basics really well, um, and then see how we go against the likes of New Zealand, uh, Fiji, and Canada and Nepal.
Mm. Care for another helping, darling? Yes, my love. <laughs> Garso. Red Bull gives you wings. Welcome back once again to so Dialogue Schools Rugby Week 4 will go underway this weekend. Some interesting clash, Mutu. Uh, uh, I'm sure it's going to be a, a great game of rugby for the restart after the break, Mutu. Especially, I'm interested with Wesley versus a Royal College game and also Isipatana versus Trinity. Let's take game by uh, game, uh, Mutu. Wesley versus uh, Royal. What can the Wesleyans do differently? I think there were certain things that all the teams that needed to fix themselves. I think this rest period would have been a good opportunity for them to uh, rest up and uh, refresh themselves and adjust their training patterns as well. And these games that we are coming up, it will be really interesting because there will be a new face, new teams coming up with new plans and stuff. So Royal Wesley would be interesting because Royal with their heavy forwards, it will be interesting to see how Wesley combats that uh, aspect of the game. You mentioned Royal with the forwards. We know the strength of Royal is, of course, their forwards. So as Wesley, you meant, I did mention that Wesley forwards played a really game. We mentioned Wesley forward versus St. Peter's backs uh, in the last week episode, Mutu. Uh, so it's going to be a forward-forward battle, but obviously there are some uh, running rugby as well, um, as we can expect uh, from both the teams. Yeah, I think Royal wants to run a bit more in terms of their back. So I think they are, they are open to play a bit of, bit of an expansive game. But it will be interesting to see what Wesley comes up uh, this time because uh, against St. Peter's, they fell a bit short in terms of execution on their game plan. Right. Enough. Who's going to win? I think Royal will come on top as uh, they have been doing because their rhythm going into the break was good. I think we expect uh, Dushan Luke to keep the same track with their players and come out on top this game. Have your predictions uh, on the link below or on this video and uh, also uh, next game, Isipatana vs Trinity. Isipatana vs Trinity is really interesting because I think Trinity had a lot of things that they wanted to iron out. I think this break would have been a good opportunity for them to go back to the drawing board and restructure themselves. Isipatana, we know who they are and what they represent. They want to run and uh, score tries. So it will be a really interesting game at Havelock Park for the home team. This is going to be an uh, electric game uh, for sure, but uh, Trinity need the win more than Isipatana need uh, in terms of that uh, Group uh, 1 uh, battle, Mutu. And uh, uh, visiting team, do you think how much pressure they are going to have, uh, especially given the fact Trinity coming to Colombo, they won against Sishumangala 49-12, uh, of course a weak team. Uh, one week break, uh, does that enough to settle and find a new toner coming into this game? The team, uh, Trinity has been really interesting because the game that they played against St. Thomas, they managed to beat uh, St. Thomas and then they played again against uh, DS. DS, but they fell short in that game. Again, they played Sumangala, which they came off of a big win, but for a team like Trinity, I think they would have been a benefit in terms of playing because they were continuously improving their games as it went along. But it is interesting to see what they have done over the break, whether they have gone back to the drawing board and ironed out certain mistakes. But Isipatra will continue on the same form, the same trajectory with their playmakers and their forwards. But it will be interesting to see who comes out on top because we, this is a hard game for anyone to predict because Trinity will be up for this game. Because this is the biggest opposition that they are facing this season for the first time. Did you say hard game to predict? Uh, I put my money on Isipatana, but I didn't mention the Wesley versus Royal. I might want to see Wesley coming on top to have a, had a greater havoc on this uh, uh, group. Uh, Mutu, we want to see like that. That's the improvement of rugby, yeah. and uh, I put my money on Isipatana. Yeah. I'll, okay, I'll take Trinity on this and let's see who comes out on top. Great, <laughs> great. Interesting. We need some banter here. Well done, Mutu. St. Peter's, St. Joseph's. St. Peter's, St. Joseph's, the classic uh, derby uh, for the Joe Pete. I think uh, both teams are equally poised because Joe Pete is like uh, a different game from any other league game. So the, this will be an interesting game to watch because whoever performs on that day well will come out on top. So who comes to the game with a clear mindset on strategy and execution will take the trophy at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, St. Peter's, uh, sorry, St. Joseph's showed a little uh, 
dominant performance uh, on Zyra game and then they beat uh, Thurston. They didn't have uh, much of uh, expectation or a uh, physical uh, game uh, in the last uh, two weeks. Uh, there's no game last week, so yeah. it's going to be interesting. And uh, St. Peter's, on the other hand, yeah, must be disappointed with the first half performance against Wesley, but yeah. uh, I'm sure Coach Martis has so much tricks on his bags and uh, they will come to this game all guns blazing. St. Peter's had a very different strategy when they played Wesley. So they will. this will be a complete new adjustment when they are playing against St. Joseph's. So it's interesting to see what they have done over the break as well. It will be two fresh teams coming for a challenge to get that trophy for the Joe Pete. So let's see how it goes. And another close game, Muto. Oh, week four of Dialogue Schools Rugby. This is exciting. I don't know. I and we literally watch all eight games uh, for our analysis perspective. But uh, having all these good games on one day, that's like, oh my God, we need like at least four screens, Muto. <laughs> and uh, okay, St. Thomas is uh, DSC night. That's a really crucial game for both sides. I think even the Thomians, after their win last week against Science, would want to keep that, that same momentum going forward because this will be an interesting game for DS as well because it will decide whether they are going to stay in the hunt for the league or not. So this will be a real crucial game for both. A win perhaps pretty well secure their spot to number two or number one. But anyway, we have to wait and see. Correct. But their playmaker, Omagi Liege, he was fantastic uh, player indeed. Uh, the skipper, of course. Uh, and uh, St. Thomas uh, what should they do different to counter this uh, DS in America? I think going back to their set pace, they'll have to go back to the set pace and start dominating in those areas because DS likes to run with the ball. So I think if they take control of the game through set pieces and restarts, I think they should manage to overcome DS. But DS is not going to go away easily. They will come back and they will keep attacking because they like to score tries and get points on the board early. So whoever starts first, that will be a big key factor here. Set piece, of course, and we we saw some improvement in terms of DSN America's line-out drive and their set piece as well. So it's going to be interesting. And then Zyra versus Vidyartha, Vidyartha traveling to Colombo. They are in another uh, different league. Uh, they showed so much venom in terms of their attacking rugby in the week one, of course. So it's going to be another test for Zyra on the other hand, who are looking for the first win. Exactly. Vidyarth, like I said, they are, very, they are a good team, they are underdogs, they are looking like they will take a few scalps out. Tough game for Saira, I would expect a close encounter between the two because I think they are evenly matched. I think the final outcome will be decided based on the per team that makes the least amount of mistakes on that particular day. Yeah, Science versus uh, Dharma Raja. Uh, again, uh, Science uh, perhaps uh, will uh, win this game. They need a big win to come out of uh, all those controversies. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, Kingswood versus Thurston uh, up in the hills. Uh, again, it's going to be a much needed. Uh, uh, much Kingswood, a much needed win they are looking for perhaps. I'll put the money on Kingswood. And the final game, Moto, is uh, Dharma Raja versus St. Anthony's up in the hills. They play their big match here uh, yeah, in terms of rugby. Yeah. yeah, so I think this is also going to be out of the league. It will be a completely different game because it's the match of the year for them. So it will be based on who's going to be ready to go from the start itself and take that uh, lead. Yeah, both teams looking for the win. Uh, so these are the week four of uh, Dialogue Schools Rugby uh, preview. And uh, that's all we have. And uh, we'll see you next week with all these eight games uh, action, review, and more analysis and some coaches' perspective as well. Uh, Motu, once again, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Excited for the weekend. Let's see what uh, the internationals bring us as well as the domestic schools rugby. See you next week. <laughs> Red Bull gives you wings. For another helping, darling. Yes, my love. <laughs> Garçon. Red Bull gives you wings.